But I want to show you something else that may come as a surprise, because uh, you obviously everything in the Scripture is there by design. And some people challenge me, say, what about Numbers 2? It's a boring chapter, a lot of numbers and stuff. Is every detail there by design? What might be hidden behind the details of the camp of Israel? Jesus said in Psalm 40, verse 7, and also Hebrews 10, 7 is quoted, The volume of the book is written of me. Every detail in the Bible points to Jesus Christ. Let's challenge this here. If you wade through Numbers 2, you'll discover they number each of the tribes. Judah has 74,600, Issachar 54,4, etc., etc. They're all on the screen here. Uh, and these numbers are the men older than 20 able to go to war. So it does, include, does not include the children or women. It does include the aged. Follow me? So to find out what the real population is, you probably have to multiply each one of these by some factor, two or three, pick a number, to, to account for the wife and you know, some but these are, so these are core populations. And you go through all of these, say, gee, check, that's exciting. What do I do with all that information? Well, bear with me. Something else you'll learn in Numbers is that these 12 tribes are to muster into four camps. There's the camp of Judah, where Issachar and Zebulun muster with him and under his ensign. And then there's a camp of Reuben, where Simeon and Gad muster under his uh, thing. Judah, of course, had a lion, a lion of the tribe of Judah. It was on his ensign. They'd all rust, must, each one had a symbol on their ensign. It comes from the tw twelve signs of the, the uh, Matzeroth. But uh, Judah is the lead of the, of, uh, of the camp, what they call the camp of Judah. Reuben, Simeon, Gad become the camp of Reuben. He, his symbol is a man and uh, his ensign, and they rally around that. Ephraim uh, is, has as a symbol of ox, strength, beast of burden. And uh, Ephraim, Manasseh, and Benjamin rally around that which figures because Benjamin and Joseph were, Ephraim and Manasseh were sons of Joseph, right? And Joseph and, and uh, Benjamin were the children of Rachel. They were in a very privileged group. Anyway, and then we've got Dan, Asher, and Naphtali. Dan was originally a serpent, but uh, Ahizer, the head of the tribe of Dan, didn't like that, so he switched it to an eagle with a serpent in its mouth, by the way. And that's recorded in... Uh, in some of the Bible handbooks, but anyway, um, you say, so there, there you go, you say, geez, Jack, that's, that's, uh, that's really thrilling that you gave us that information, what do I do with it? Well, notice that these camps, then, are slightly different sizes, okay. Um, in the center of the camp is the tribe of Levi, the tabernacle, and uh, it's always faced to the, 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 on the east side is where the door is, and the Levites take care of this. The three families of the Levites, the uh, Gershonites, the Kohathites, and the Merarites, have all kinds of duties to, to, to deal with this moving portable. But Moses and his brother Aaron and the priests are on the east side. Not all Levites are priests. Sons of Aaron are priests. Okay. And so um, I want you to be respect Levitical. You need to think like a rabbi here. They tried, give them credit, they tried very hard to be precise in doing what God said. The camp of Judah was to camp east of the Levites. Okay. The camp of Reuben south of the Levites, and to be strict obedient to these, that denies the area that's southeast. You either east or south, you can't be southeast because then you're neither south or east. In other words, only the cardinal directions, north, south, east, west, are ordained in the Torah. And only the width of Levites' camp would be allowed, and the length would be proportional. So here you have the Levites in the middle, and when you number those, there are about 22,000 there. And however, I don't know how wide they were, whether it's 100 yards or 100 miles, call it whatever, but its width is a, a unit we're going to deal with. So Judah, with a, under the tribal uh, the standard of a lion, would camp as wide as Levites and then take as much space as they needed eastward, right? And uh, Reuben uh, was to the south. He had a symbol of a man, and they would camp there and take the, as wide as the Levites were, they're, they're, because they're, as long as they're... They can be south as long as they're no wider than the Levites, and out they go. And it leaves a question, what about here? What about in between these two? Well, that's southeast. It's neither south nor east, so that wouldn't be rabbinically comfortable, right? And so likewise, we've got southwest, northwest, northeast as, as areas that are not specified for any of the tribes. Ephraim, with the symbol of the ox, would go to the west, and Dan, with his eagle, having substitute for the serpent, um, all, these come from the pr prophecies of Jacob in Genesis 49. But in any case, uh, there's Dan with the eagle. And uh, so there we have it. Now the question is, okay, we've got, we've got the arrangement, but these populations of those camps are different. 
The largest was Judah, the smallest was Ephraim, and the other two were about the same. So what I want to do here is imagine that we have a helicopter out here that we're going to take a trip. And the helicopter I've arranged for is a very unusual one because it's also a time machine. And so as we get in this, collectively, imagine in our ma imagination, get in this helicopter, we're going to fly over to Israel. And uh, we're going to have it also go backwards in time to the time of the wilderness wanderings. And uh, as it goes there, we're going to approach from the east, and we will see right in the middle of the camp, of course, the Levite area with the tabernacle. And then we'll see these four arms. But as we get there, we'll also see the arms in proportion. And so as we approach in our imaginary helicopter, what do we see? A what? A cross, exactly, exactly. Judah was 186, four, uh, 186 units, and, and uh, uh, Ephraim only 108, and the other two roughly 150. So, yes, it's a, it's a scale drawing of a, of a cross. I think it's very interesting. There's a, here's a sketch from the air of the camp of Israel in the, hidden away in Numbers chapter 2, if you know how to look. And uh, I think that's kind of fun. And, of course, that, needless to say, is a model of the throne of God. We have God sitting in the middle with his throne and the rest of it. And he's surrounded by an ox, a man, an eagle, and a lion. If you've done your Bible homework, you know that from Isaiah 6 and uh, Ezekiel 1 and 10 and Revelation, there's always cherubim around guarding the throne of God that have faces, right? Four faces. An ox, a man, an eagle, and a lion, which also profile the four Gospels, but we'll get, we're getting ahead of ourselves. 